Hey guys, what's up? We are finally putting Frappuccino, my Argentine black and white tegu, in his adult enclosure. Um, it is not exactly finished right here. Um, obviously, I still have the coverings on um, the glass and stuff, but we are finishing it up and I'm putting together a video, or this video, uh, to show you guys what it looks like and see his initial reactions. This is the T100 from Animal Plastics. If you're looking for a big enclosure and do not want to do it yourself, this is probably your best bet. Uh, this is 8 feet long by 4 feet wide by 4 feet tall. Um, it was a little over $1,000, but you're not going to get much better, unfortunately. Uh, and they do work with you a lot, so they, you know, their customer service is amazing. Amazing. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you guys me putting, um, you know, stuff inside, putting it together. Fortunately, I didn't record me putting the actual unit together, but I could kind of briefly discuss how I did it. Uh, so stay tuned, and we'll talk about it. Briefly talk about putting it together. You're probably going to want to have two to three people. You're going to be turning it around a couple times, and it's going to get a little bit annoying with that. You definitely cannot do it by yourself unless it's a smaller unit. Um, and the only other thing I would say that's notable is that when you get it delivered, you're going to have to meet up with the truck driver since it's so big, and you're going to have to load it probably into your own car. So you're probably going to need a car that can fit an 8x4 or whatever size you get um, piece of uh, sheet or plastic. So that's something you should think about and you should also bring an extra person as these pieces are heavy. The unit does come with detailed instructions that should be more than enough to get you through it and all the screws you will need. You will probably just need a drill. To start we first hung up our two Arcadia T5 14% UVB bulbs. They are the 48 inch ones. Um, there are some customization options that were helpful for this as well that Animal Plastics did. Uh, we then lifted up the top a little bit and pulled the cords out instead of drilling a hole, a circular hole for these things to come through so we can keep it a little bit more sealed. The customization options Animal Plastic offers allows for you to put some beams in here that match the width or the thickness of the fixtures of these UVB bulbs so you can hook them up pretty easily, you just drill them into it. Um, and the 14% that we got, we got because there's a lot of distance between the ground and these. This is a very powerful UVB bulb, so I recommend definitely double checking the distance before you go with this bulb. Next, we started piling in the substrate. I did a sand soil mix. Uh, I usually do two bags of soil to one bag of sand. This is just regular play, play sand. Uh, we also got the cheap Scott's organic uh, with peat moss uh, soil. Um, this usually works out and is typical for a lot of Tegu owners. Um, this is probably the most recommended when I ask my Tegu group that I'm in on Facebook. Um, so I definitely recommend going with that. It's also a cheap option compared to a lot of other organic soils. So if you get a lot of them, you're not going to break the bank. I did about 8 inches of depth, which is pretty much recommended for uh, adult tegu. Uh, there's some parts that are a little deeper though. The next thing I added in is this beautiful piece by David over at Country Scales and Tails Enclosures in Missouri. It is a combo hide basking spot that features a removable top, a gripped ramp, a hide space, it is well finished and a lot cheaper than any other place I uh, priced out. So I definitely recommend them and I'll link them in the description. It is a beautiful piece and I'm very happy with it. Next, I added in the remainder of the lights. This bulb right here is an 80 watt floodlight. Uh, next, I added in a Mega Ray 160 watt so we could have a basking area for UVB as well. I double checked the measurements on it. Then I just added in a regular LED bulb that emits daylight, uh, just to brighten up the enclosure a little bit. Along with the basking rocks you will see in a moment, the temperature gets to a perfect 130-ish degrees, which is great for an adult tegu. So I got a bunch of rocks from a local masonry store. They had a ton of options, and there was these nice sheet-like rocks that were totally black that would absorb a lot of light. And I just put two of them in there, and like I said, it gets it to a nice basking temperature. Here I am adding some additional rocks to the enclosure, just to diversify the horizontal space, add for some climbing activity. 
Uh, I put three in there. The main one that you're seeing right here is this nice granite rock. Uh, it's very big, very heavy, and it, it looks great inside the enclosure. Then I added two simple rocks, as you can see. Here's one of them here, and I will be adding an additional one in a moment. Uh, I might add more rocks in the future. I might even remove them in the future. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I did get a ton of rocks for a nice price, so I do have additional rocks just laying around. So if not using them in here, maybe I'll use them in my Aki enclosures because they love climbing. Uh, but we'll see how the future goes. Finally, I added in sort of bathing slash water bowl. I don't expect him to use it yet since he's kind of tiny and he's afraid of the plastic to be honest, uh, but I put it in there for now. I also added some springtails from Josh's frogs. I got two of them and added them around the enclosure. Along with that, I took some of my dubia roaches from my colony and threw them in there for enrichment and cleaning. Here's the Final enclosure with Frappuccino in there chilling. The only couple additions I put in there is a small water bowl in the back until he's ready for the big one, and a Thermapro to read humidity and temperature. Uh, this is the grand scale picture and it looks awesome. I'll leave you with some videos of Frappuccino exploring the enclosure, checking it out, and him eating for the first time. There's also a little funny moment when he jumps onto my camera, so stay tuned for that, and I will catch back up with you at the end of this video to close it out. adult enclosure it was a very stressful process that took a lot longer than I thought it would take uh, but it all paid off in the end he is running around enjoying it checking everything out and I'm happy to see him grow and you know flourish in this enclosure he's definitely making the most of it so far and uh, he seems very happy with uh, the amount of room he has if you have any questions about this build or getting this unit um, or doing any of the things I did, uh, let me know anything I could do to make this less stressful for you guys, I'll be happy to help with. Also, anything of interest like the substrate I used, uh, where I got the hide slash basking spot, or my lighting, uh, could be down in the description for your use later. If you're doing some similar project, or this exact project almost, uh, that would be useful to you. So definitely check that out if you want to look at that information from me. The next video we're going to do is we're going to be talking about making a nesting box for a bearded dragon. Uh, I took mine to the vet recently and they recommend that I go ahead and, you know, make a nesting box for her since she is producing eggs and in case she wants to lay them, we have to provide uh, an adequate area for her to do so. So uh, stay tuned, check that out, that'll probably be this weekend. Uh, otherwise, like, comment, subscribe uh, if you enjoy these videos and follow me on Twitter, Professor Herb underscore. That's uh, me on Twitter. Uh, it's at the end of this video as well, and you can check out my channel. I'll be on there also. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I appreciate your viewership.